Actually, uh, when I landed the other day, uh, a lot of memories flooded back about like road trips to Perth and the excitement uh, that playing in, in a venue in Perth. And then to walk in here this morning, uh, it was once known as the Entertainment Center. Uh, so it, it, it is really becoming a, a real experience right now for me. Yeah, so a lot of my communication with the staff throughout the franchise has just been like text messages and over the phone. Uh, so to actually sit down with these people and talk about our plan moving forward, meeting the players, uh, you know, there's something to be said for still the one on one contact with people versus everything telecommunication. So uh, just getting to know people and getting to know me as well is very important for us to hit the ground running once the season comes around. I, look, uh, to, to Sean is going to bring great uh, all-round versatility, um, but I do want to like address the defense uh, the way I would like to play. Uh, you know, I think uh, offense will take care of itself. They were a very good offensive team last year, and there's a lot of the same members coming back. So uh, rebounding and defense, and then that'll just propel the offense as well. So uh, everyone whether they're an import or the Australian content, they're going to understand that we need to play some defense to catapult our offense. You've got a very good team. A lot of the different teams have been Trev and so they've had three coaches in three years. Yes. Having challenges that to try to not give too much they have to relearn and, and change given the, the change they've been through. Yeah, look, very good question. Now, uh, fortunate or unfortunate, I had five coaches in my first five years as a pro, so I've spent a bit of time reflecting on that and what that meant as a player. Like, the demands can be a little different from coach to coach. So uh, being mindful of that, uh, being having a clear vision and producing clarity so there doesn't become that indecision. Uh, because once you get out there playing, you, look, you don't want to have a cloudy mind. So. Uh, I think back to one of the earlier questions where I need to have a rapport and a trust with the players before we actually get in a meaningful game. Uh, I think that'll really help us uh, take care of that. When do you reckon you'll have everyone together? Yeah, we're striving for the middle of the month. Uh, obviously, uh, we still got one more import to add to the group, uh, so that'll have to be a really quick turnaround. Um, but yeah, by the middle of the month, we should be at full, full force here heading into the preseason. Uh, look, we any, any sport or any business, the, the timeline is the timeline, so we just need to deal with it. Um, and that's where early on simplicity and clarity is going to be huge with the way that I approach that moving forward. Yeah, look, uh, when I first accepted the job, I uh, flew to Vegas to be around Summer League. So, uh, look, we're trying to get that situation secured. Me, personally, I want to get it done just so I know where we're at as far as our roster. I think it brings comfort to the players. Back to the three coaches in three years, when you can bring a, a, a picture together sooner rather than later, it just helps guys be at peace and ease with where we're heading. Yeah, we obviously got to address like some size on our front court, rebounding. Uh, but then the type of player I like is versatile. So uh, those guys aren't easy to find, but uh, we'll be doing our best to try and find someone that fills that because uh, it's great to talk about imports and what they're bringing to the group. But we already have a very talented group of players. Um, so we've got to make sure that those people are going to fit with the guys that we already have. Yeah, uh, for me personally, I want to put myself in successful situations. And uh, when you talk about Perth Wildcats, like the longevity of the franchise, it, history speaks for itself. So uh, that to me, that's attractive about the job. Uh, everything's not just going to be peaches and cream. There's going to be some tough days. But, uh, you know, I understand that and I need to be able to deal with that. Um, you know, so uh, that, that, that part of it's attractive to me. 
leadership years gone by, or be talking about being close to the Wildcats and what makes a successful team here in the West? Uh, no, look, I've I've been, you know, I've watched NBO over the years, followed Trevor's success. Uh, he was busy at some league himself, um, you know, so I don't want to encroach on his uh, situation and be mindful of his family time in the off season. Um, but I'm sure at some stage we'll we'll catch up. Um, and, and, you know, look, uh, some of the players on the roster were young whippersnappers when I was finishing my career in Townsville. So uh, there is there should be a smoother transition with knowing some of those guys. Uh, when when a bad season is 16 and 12, you're working with something pretty good. You, you, you coach with so many different places around the world and with your rooms around the world. How different is Australian basketball um, when you sit down to do this job? Do you have to be a different approach compared to when you're at the international level or when you're in America or like that? No, uh, you know, some of the uh, coaches that I lent on as I went through this process, uh, you know, everyone says the same thing. You got to be yourself. Uh, like I'm going to ask our players to play to their strengths. Obviously, you always want to address your weaknesses and try and get better with that as it goes on. But I have to be myself because at the end of the day, you're only kidding yourself if you're trying to be someone or making something that it's not. Um, so I'm going to be myself. Uh, you know, and I, I look forward to that. Uh, I'm passionate and uh, energetic about this sport. I've been very lucky to do what I've done with this sport, both as a player and now as a coach. So um, I'm just going to continue to be me and love it or like it. Yeah, uh, if you, you follow uh, my coaching career, I've been coaching for 12 years. I've only been at two stops. Um, so part of myself, I want to put myself in a good situation, but I also want to create a situation where I see myself long term. Um, so we can look at the short term and say three coaches in three years, but there were some people before this time that was here for a long time and very successful. So, uh, y you know, I'm trying to lose the short-term memory and look at the history and the track record of the club. Sorry? Oh, huge. Yes, huge. Uh, like, I've already reached out to a number of the former players that are living in the community uh, that, you know, we swapped some nice pleasantries in playing days, but obviously I have huge respect for those guys. Um, so I want them to embrace uh, where we're going with the team and I want them to be around it because uh, you know, WA and the Perth Wildcat fan base are very passionate to start with. So I want to make sure everyone feels welcome and, uh, you know, success breeds success. So having the likes of Grace and Vlahov, Paul Rogers, Catalini, I know I've missed out on some names, but, you know, I want to embrace the history and I want those guys to feel welcome that they can walk into our locker room at any time and enjoy the moment with their, uh, you know, new teammates. Yeah, I guess because I haven't been around the NBL uh, on a day to day, I'm naive to all of this that you're talking about. So naivety can be a great thing. So, uh, you know, I'm just thinking of the uh, us being embraced in the community, our players and franchise doing a great job in the community. Uh, so the Wildcat brand will be a great thing for people to uh, want to cheer for and us as players and coaches representing. What is Luke Travis looking at? You've got the NBA to worry about him as well, and you've got a position for him in this team. Where does he fit into your jigsaw puzzle? Oh, look, uh, we need Luke Travis to be at his best, take a step in his career because if he takes that step, then he becomes an NBA player. If he's playing for the Perth Wildcats, he's not quite an NBA player. So uh, he's got things to work on. I, I want to uh, get him to the NBA level. Uh, I think what Summer League did for him was he realizes um, probably how he needs to apply himself 
uh, on a game-to-day basis and be a consistent player. Bit, oh, like a, a bit of everything, but just getting a little better at, at his versatility, like his playmaking ability. Like uh, we talk about Bryce Cotton, we got uh, Corey Webster that is an elite scorer in this league or on the even the international scene. Throw in two imports, Todd Blanchfield, like Luke Travers can be the guy that uh, he's a, a straw that stirs the drink. So uh, I don't want to pigeonhole him. Uh, I think it's his versatility. Uh, that, that is his strength and as, as I go through this uh, I want basketball players on the court so they can read and react off of each other versus well we need a 6'11 guy out there you know I want versatility dynamic players so Luke Travers really fits that mould uh, Yep Uh, like everyone's going to have their role to perform, uh, but versatility is the way that I want to play because then the opposition can't key in on as as much stuff when we do our scouts and stuff like that. So uh, the, the versatility is intriguing to me. But when you say that, you you need to be a lead or have a very good skill set uh, that allows you to do that. Like everyone knows, Bryce Cotton is is trying to put 50 on you every night. Um, but if, if, if our opposition can really key in on him, uh, we need players that can feed off of that themselves, utilise his strengths to their benefit, like vice versa as well.